Hey internet, today we're going to talk about a camera slider build that I've made. It, uh, it's better than anything you've seen before. It is better than any build that's been done on the internet. What we basically did is we looked at all the builds that were on the internet that we could find and we picked the best thing out of each of them and created the best camera slider you're ever going to see and we all did it for under 75 bucks. You're going to love this one, let's take a look at it. And here you have our one meter slider. I'd love to be using the slider to show it off, but I've only got one. I'll go into the details of it in a second. As you can see, it's a very, very cool looking machine. Now, what you have here is a platform, sliding platform. Now, these wheels are actually grooved wheels that we actually got from uh, our local hardware store. They were about $4 each, those wheels. And those wheels are uh, um, uh, actually sliding door um, track wheel, you know, from your normal sliding door of your house. These are the wheels you buy for those. This here is inch by inch angle. Actually, I think it's a bit less than an inch across here, but it's inch that way, so but you can use any angle you want. And the angle on the end here is um, 35 mil by, or 40 mil by 40 mil, which is whatever, I don't know what that is in inches. Um, having said that, we bought two meters of this. You could buy three meters of this and not have that at all, and it cost you about... Uh, I think that all, all the angle costs us about um, $35. Platform was a couple of bucks. That's just a metal platform. Bought some bolts and some nuts. Um, six mil bolts and nuts for the wheels. And as you can see, that thing slides along very, very smooth. You can go as slow as you want. We put the 5D up in here and it's not an issue at all. And I've just got this $12, you don't even have to use this, you can put a bolt through to the bottom of your 5D if you want, put a bit of uh, nice uh, material on here or something like that. Um, the, the key is obviously to make this part first. You make your track system, sorry, your trolley first before anything else. You don't necessarily need one of these. I just happen to have one laying around, so I've used it so just a ball mount with a quick release that makes it a bit easier swapping between tripod and so on. Um, but, as I said, you don't need that. You can put the camera straight on if you want and use that, but it's probably a bit easier with one of those. You get a level in there as well, which is pretty handy. The really cool thing about this is, as I said, once you've made this part, you just make your tracks. You, work, you measure from the inside of the groove to the inside of the groove, and you make sure that you make your tracks that width on each end to the millimetre, so you make it perfect. And then in, in the middle, let's turn that over. In the middle here, I actually made the mistake of... Um, making a tripod mount, which was really a waste of time. The point of the tripod was to have it on, obviously have it on a tripod, but it, uh, it just flopped around too much, so it was unusable. You ideally would have a tripod on each end to make one of these things work anyway. But you just get a bit of angle for here and for here, and you can just put a flat piece across there. So you don't need angle on that. For instance, you can use a flat piece of anything just so that the middle doesn't flex in and out so the tracks don't drop off. As you can see from the you can see from the trolley, the bolt goes through with a couple of lock nuts um, and there's a washer just behind the wheel and the plate just so it gives it a bit of freedom. It's only a very small washer but it's there. The feet, as you can see I've put a bit of angle across this way and that way. You don't even need to have these type of feet. These feet I had laying around from an old cabinet that we had, we pulled it apart and I thought I may use them one day. They've been in a box for about two years and I used them for this. But you could, if you didn't have this if you didn't have this piece here in the middle, which gives it too much height, if you had a flat piece there, you could just use the angle with some furniture, some furniture uh, protectors on the bottom and that would be enough to sit this on any surface. What I generally do is I sit it on top of a table or a bench or whatever, um, but the other thing I do is actually, uh, you can buy those um, two mounted uh, halogen lights on a yellow stand from your local hardware store. I've got a couple of those stands left over which have a flat bar on top that the two lights sit on. Um, the lights are obviously gone now, I've had them for ages. So I use those because they're adjustable, they're almost like a tripod stand. And I put one on each end and just sit, just sit it there like that on top of it. So it's quite mobile and usable so you can use it at any height you like. But as I said, this thing is just cool and it's smooth and it's silent. It doesn't make any noise at all. Better than any PVC slider you'll see out there. This thing works like a treat, and you've got a bit of movement in there to make it sort of slack. So it slides along beautifully. 
It doesn't catch anywhere. There's no tight spots or loose spots. It's just really, really simple. The two things I wouldn't do again. Okay, the first thing I wouldn't do is I wouldn't make a tripod mount for the middle. I could probably make a tripod mount on each end, but I wouldn't put it on the middle. So I wouldn't put this piece on. I would put a flat piece across there so I wouldn't have so much height. Therefore, I wouldn't need these feet. If I didn't have any of these feet, uh, I would have had to take that angle off and do something else. The other thing I wouldn't do is I started using rivets on the ends here, but I actually ran out of rivets. And I was doing this late at night. I needed it in a hurry. So I, uh, I um, just started using self-tapping screws, like here. And they're galvanized screws. They won't rust or anything, but they're sharp. So every time, I've, I've actually pricked myself a couple of times on it. Uh, you know just by picking it up and moving it so I'd recommend you don't use screws or put something nice on the back end so it doesn't hurt uh, I'm going to actually replace these with rivets when I get around to buying some I pull the screws out pop a rivet in just do one at a time until I get everything I want done and this will be a very very cool machine and I'll probably take that bar off and put a flat piece in having said that under $75 in fact I don't even think it was that much you can't get a better slide than that for the money not in a million years. As you can see, it's pretty damn good. It's not perfect. There's a few things I need to change to make it really, really good. But as far as usability goes, it works really, really well. As you can see from the test video, at the end of this video, you'll see a link to it. And you can get an idea of how it runs. Um, you can go very, very slow with it. And it doesn't jolt or stuff up or anything. So if you like our vids, um, or you have any questions about the slider, feel free to message me. We'll give you any questions you like. Uh, and we're also going to put all the details in the description about what materials we used. Um, like and subscribe. I'll see you for the next one. See ya.